Hello everyone, welcome back to another video here on Play on GA with me Seamus Brady and Luke Payton. In this video we are going to be giving a roundup of all the club hurling action which took place over the weekend. There were some thrilling moments, some absolutely fantastic finals and semi-finals, the whole lot. Luke, we're going to head through all the action starting with of course the Kilkenny hurling final. Before we get into this, please like, subscribe, share and comment. It really helps us out here on the channel. But the Kilkenny hurling final, Ballyhale Shamrocks, they've always been kind of the dominant force in Kilkenny Hurling. I mean, me and you growing up, Luke Bally Hale, have had just a ridiculous level of control over the Kilkenny Championship, but they hit new heights of dominance in the Kilkenny Championship, clinching their 20th title. And that was the first time that they've ever done the five in a row. The first time that the five in a row has been done in Kilkenny. They beat James Stevens by 121 to 211, even though they had a man sent off. What did you make of them? Yeah, look, hugely impressive. And just, uh, the, I suppose, the hunger kind of that they have as well. I think a few people were starting to kind of uh, look at James Stevens a little bit this year. Now, Brian Cody was involved in everything as well. Was, there was like maybe a bit of momentum about them. But look, Valley Hill just kind of reinforced, uh, I suppose, their dominance in Kilkenny. And look, it's when you look through the team that you kind of realise how they are so dominant, I suppose. And it's just a freakish kind of generation of players. And you, you look at the half-back line and the half-forward line, I think in particular. So, Evan Shefflin, uh, Richie Reid, Derek Corkin, and then the half-forward line was what? Adrian Mullen, TJ Reid, and Owen Cody. So, like, that's... I think those two lines are inter-county standard. And when you've got those players and you can just throw in the likes of Joey Holds and Colin Fennelly, Ron Corkman, Darren Mullen, in around them as well, like, it's it's nearly an inter-county team, I think. And, look, I think... The fact that like Bally Gunner are an unbelievable side, and everybody knows how good Bally Gunner are, and the fact that it took like a last second goal from Bally Gunner last year to beat them as well, kind of nearly against the run of play, just shows like how strong this team is. And to be honest, look, I I think look, it's it's gonna be take a brave person to uh to predict anyone else to win in all Ireland other than them at the moment. I think it's looking like themselves and Bally Gunner and the Pierce because the early favourites. I think for uh for the for the whole crown later on the year. Yeah, I mean, in my mind, it's right between them two again this year. I can see the two of them playing each other in the final again. I think they've both proven that they are the best teams. Uh, in particularly last season, they both looked outrageously good. Bally Gunner's standout performance for me was when they played against Kilmallock, the Limerick champions, and they just took them to the cleaners. Kilmallock never got going, but Bally Gunner shut them down on every line of the pitch. And then Bally Hale's one was when they played Clock Balacola in the Leinster final. And of course... I think it was the Offaly champions had taken them to extra time. There was questions about Ballyhale, are they declining? Clock Balacola had actually beaten Chemical Croaks in the previous game. Stephen Picky Mar had played a blinder that day, and people were saying, could Clock actually do a number on Ballyhale as well? And Ballyhale tore them limb from limb in a game that was actually difficult to watch. I think they've isolated themselves as the two best clubs, and I think they are destined to kind of face off again. But talk to me about the goal. Of course, it was Joey Cuddy, his second half goal. That really put the icing on the cake. Up until that, did you think there was a chance James Stevens could have come back or was it already beyond them? Well, look, I think it was the interesting was where the reaction to the Paddy Mullen uh, red card as well. And look, and Bally Hale, uh, they just took over. I think like, and you, you've seen some of the scores as well. There was that, there's the point in particular that's circulating the movement, I think, between the threat a lot, that Bally Hale are able to move the ball through the line so easily as well. And the scores they get are just, it's just so, so good kind of as well. And I think as well, TJ Reid, one man the match was like complete, like was just dominant throughout really. And he's still delivering at like to a ridiculous level. And uh, like, I just think, I just think with Bally Hale kind of, it's, uh, it's, it's going to take something just freakish to, to uh, I think to turn them over, I suppose, particularly in Leinster as well, I think. And I'm kind of looking at the other teams in Leinster and I just don't see anyone really kind of on their level at the moment. The only thing maybe is that they're not quite getting the same impact from the bench that uh, they have in previous years. But uh, no, look, I see it. Like the starting 15 is absolutely ridiculous. And look, yeah, maybe they ha aren't getting the same level of quality through kind of from like young players too. But like at the moment, they just need to do, uh, while they have this team and they're all playing to this standard together, they just need to maintain them as well and just win as much as they can because this is just it's just a freak generation that they have at the moment. And yeah, it's not going to last forever. And some of those lads are getting on a bit like the Colin Fenleys, like the TJ Reid. So while they have them still on top of form, they just need to capitalise while they're, while they're playing so well. Yeah, 100% agree with that. Um, you were mentioning about, we were talking about, sorry, that Ballyhale and Ballygunner are the two standout teams to potentially go and win the club championship. 
Limerick might have a thing or two to say about that. Obviously, the All Ireland hurling champions. Their hurling club final is going to be contested by Napierschig and Kilmallock. Kilmallock, of course, looking to retain their Limerick senior hurling title. We're going to start with Napierschig's semi final. They storm past out Liberties in their semi final. A really strong second half performance saw them over the line. Do you think Napierschig have a better chance of winning it this year than they did last year? Yeah, I think I think the Piercy just have the the bit between their teeth this year, and that you're looking at the the tallies that they're putting up. I suppose at the moment that uh, it's just uh, they've they've absolutely demolished everyone in their path so far, and they just look like they have that little bit of extra thing about them. I suppose this year as well, some of their older players as well that weren't fully firing last year kind of seem to be completely back now as well. Like Kevin Downs has been the top scorer in the championship and everything as well. So they yeah. Uh, they uh, no, look, they look really, really good. And uh, I suppose in comparison, look, Kilmallock had an almighty scare, I suppose, at the weekend as well. It was a late goal by Robbie Mahon as well, like last puck of the game pretty much to, uh, to beat it there. So, like, um, yeah, I think the form book at the moment suggests that Ned Piercic are, uh, are quite the outfit this year and that it's going to be, uh, that look, at the, if you're basing off the, the results so far in the championship in Limerick so far, you'd imagine that they will be favourites going in. They have the likes look look Peter Casey be back fit and everything like that as well. And that they have it's just it's just a very, very strong side as well. You list some of the players that we, we list some of the players for Bally Hale. You can do the same thing with the Piercing as well. And it's just it's a ridiculous team as well. There's players off the Limerick panel like Ron, like Ronan Lynch as well that is just uh at club level, absolutely dominate. William Henn as well, another fellow like that too, not in Limerick, but just so good at club level. And I think uh I think that they I think they'll be Kilmalik next week. I think that they just that they're back to what we expect from, from them as well. And I'd seriously, seriously consider them all earning contenders. Yeah, I have to agree with you there. I think they just look so good and a one twenty three to nine point victory, like that's absolutely outrageous. Kilmalik do you think they look weaker or do you think it's just an appears to look way stronger? Uh, it's it's hard to know because in a way, look, I think, well, I do think the appears are way stronger as well. Another fellow, Adrian Breen as well, kind of was on the Limerick panel in around there as well. He hit six from play at the weekend. He seems to be hitting top form. It's it's all these kind of, there's, the, there's uh, Dave Dempsey as well, used to be on the Limerick panel playing really, really well this year. There's just these fellas that are kind of seasoned players and they just seem to be all hitting form at the right time as well. Kilmallock had a, were very impressive in Limerick last year and had a really, really good run in the club championship. But uh, I think that their kind of uh, their peak is probably a little bit below what Napierisic is. And I think, look, if Napierisic plays their potential, Mike Casey as well has put past all those injury issues as well. They've kind of plagued them for the last little while too. They've been unfortunate with a few things like that as well. And look, the couple of figures like Willow Donahue in around midfield too as well. That they're just, it's... Uh, it's it's just I just think it's too strong a team that if they can get all those players out there fully fit as well I just think it's a too strong a team for Kilmallock and that's why I think they're I think it's more so that they're playing to their potential rather than Kilmallock kind of hugely declining or something like that. Yeah, no, I agree. I think even if you look at Kilmallock's key players like the likes of Gavin O'Mahony, Graham O'Cahy, like they have peaked. I'm not saying that they're not brilliant. Still, they're still brilliant hurlers, but Graham O'Cahy will never be as good as he has been. I think 2018 was the best. It was absolutely outrageous that year that they won the All-Ireland for the first time in, since the 1970s. But I just think Napierschig haven't hit their peak yet, and I feel like Kilmallock have, so I'm going to go with Napierschig to win that final. Speaking of a final that actually happened, a, a, up in Antrim, a four in a row was completed. Dunloy winning the four in a row. They beat Rory O'Cushendal by 120 to 211. You just have to give absolute huge credit to, you know, a proud hurling county like Antrim that Dunloy have managed to complete a four in a row. Yeah, definitely. And it's look, it was a uh, it, it was a huge kind of achievement as well, especially considering against Cushendal. You look at some of the players that Cushendal have, the spine in their team, Kind of with with Burke and then Campbell and the two central defensive positions. You've Neil, they've Neil McManus up the other end as well. It's a serious enough team when you list it on paper as well. And for look for Dunloy to uh, to complete four in a row when when Cushion Dollar no pushovers whatsoever. It's a serious achievement. Like for Dunloy, the Malloy's been so so good for them as well. And there's just some um, and Colin Cumming as well. He had a really really big game at the weekend in double figures with the scores as well again. So. Uh, yeah, it's look. It's the Antrim Championship has been really, really good for the last little while. Everything up there as well. Some really competitive finals in the last couple of years. So, uh, 
for Dunloy to come out with four in a row and them is just uh, it's a huge achievement for them as well. And look, I think a lot of people have got special interest in Antrim hurling in recent years as well, considering that their inter county team has been uh, providing so much entertainment as well. And there's some serious, serious hurlers up there as well. So look, I think I think Dunloy will be. Uh, I think look they'll, they'll be a good outfit, I suppose, and even going into Ulster as well. And look, they last year did a good old battle with Slot Mail, I suppose, as well. And I'd say they're probably destined as well for uh, later on in Ulster. I'm not, not sure what the draw, if they're to meet in the final or a semi final as well. But look, I think they, that game, when they inevitably do play, will be the one that will decide who comes out of Ulster this year. Yeah, I mean, you took the words out of my mouth there. I was just about to ask you. Everyone looks at Slough Neil and Dunloy, and they are the top two up in Ulster. Do you think that Slough Neil still the superior out of the two, or do you think maybe Dunloy have a better chance of beating them this year? Yeah, because it's funny because I remember we had this conversation. We had this conversation last time as well. Was that Dunloy won Antrim really impressively, and then I thought that they'd really put it up to Slough Neil as well. And then like Slough Neil just still seemed to have that kind of bit about them, I suppose, a bit. And Slot Neil were, were very, very close to getting to an all-iron final last year as well. I think there was only two they're only two points away from being an all-iron final against Bally Gunner as well. They gave Bally Gunner an absolutely huge game and look they were very, very unfortunate to come out of it. So I think look, I think you you'd you'd be mad to say that Slot Neil aren't the favourites for Ulster again this year. Like especially considering the manner they won uh, they won the Derry Championship in as well. They absolutely cruised to it as well. They didn't even have to start Brendan Rodgers in that final. He came on and off the bench at halftime and came on and scored a goal in two. I think he did. So, uh, like, I think they just seem to be still in a good place. They've shown no hints that they're, like, anyway less hungry or they've, they've lost any players because they haven't. So, uh, I still think, look, you'd have to say that... Uh, but Slotney will be the favourites for Ulster anyway as well. But I think, look, it'll, it'll be a good, good contest as well because Dunloy are definitely, uh, look, they've, they've definitely earned their, uh, their, their their titles up there as well and they're a serious, serious outfit. And look, they're probably unfortunate that they've come across but like what is probably the strongest uh, the strongest club hurling team to come out of Ulster in a good while. So uh, the fact that they're playing at the same time as Slotney, like, it's just unfortunate for them, I think, a bit. Yeah, no, I agree with what you've said, but I'd like to throw a little curveball in there, which is that Slough Neil obviously didn't win the Derry Football Championship last year. And obviously now they're coming up against the Glen and everyone's going to be watching that game. I just think that there's a little chance, maybe if Slough Neil, you know, maybe if they do reclaim the Derry Football title, maybe they will want to make a push at Ulster and maybe keeping an eye on two things at the same time, maybe Dunloy would be able to catch them on the hop if they were kind of split focused on the football and the hurling, if the McCaigs and Brendan Rogers had to do both, if they had to play football and hurling and that higher level, maybe Dunloy could catch them. But I feel like if Glenn beats Slock Neil and Slock Neil only have the hurling left, then I would 100% back Slock Neil to uh, retain the Ulster title again. And um, just before we wrap up, obviously on this hurling title, Finbars in Cork. This is a real feel-good story. They ended a 29-year wait as they claimed the Cork senior hurling title, beating Black Rock by 214 to 17. Ben Cunningham again led the way with nine points. Fantastic day for St. Finbars. What a victory. Yeah, definitely. I think, and uh, I suppose the mob was absolutely monsoon conditions as well. They went at double scores and uh, I suppose, look, they were just way hungrier as well team that kind of been starved of success a good while in hurling anyway so uh look it's a huge win for them and it's like a dual club as well so i'd expect them to probably win the football too as well so they could be in for a busy old winter ahead of them as well going forward in in munster in both both codes as well because i think in the football as well they'd be expected nearly to come out of munster i'd say it's the best team in munster arguably at the moment the hurlers are going to have a tougher route i'd say they're looking at either ballier or Ariog, but like it's uh it's a really, really uh, great achievement for them as well. And Joe, you know, it's a kind of I think it's a promising uh, sign for Cork hurling in general is that you look at some of the players that are on that team as well, that they're exactly the profile the Cork need. That I think in particular, Eaton Toomey in midfield was on the panel last year. He's that seems to be that kind of big physical midfielder that they're lacking with good skill levels too. So I I really think that he seemed to have been the player of the championship in Cork this year. So I think he could have a huge say next year as well. And then the other interesting ones, I think um, Ben O'Connor kind of was being named at wing back, but he played a lot in kind of midfield. And there's kind of a gain in a lot of comparisons to Willow Donahue in the same way he plays that 
he's just that kind of enforcer around midfield that gets huge turnovers. And that the issue for him is that, well, for Cork, I say, is that he seems to be maybe prioritising rugby and that, look, he just seems to be that he's one of the best prospects to come out of Cork, I think, in recent years. And looks like if he could, if he could actually commit to the Cork hurlers, I think he'd make an absolutely huge say in that team as well. And that if he like said that he was going to join the Cork hurling panel next year, he'd be another fellow that'd be expecting to see start. And so that'd be a really interesting one. And then up the other end of the pitch, Brian Hayes is again the exact profile they need. Big, big, tall fellow as well. Well able to win his own ball clean, able to hit scores, but he's in the footballers too. So there's all the solution, I think, to the Cork's problems. All the players they need are there whether they can actually get them in as well. But, uh, yeah, I think that'll be an interesting one. I think that Pat Ryan's going to have to spend his first kind of, his first job, I think, for Cork is going to be trying to get those fellas in as well. And then, look, as you've already mentioned, he just he's going to have to nurture kind of Ben Cunningham into the team because he looks to be, uh, he looks to be a serious, serious player. But, again, he's a fellow that's eligible for under 20 again next year too. So they're going to have to manage him and, like, his physicality as well. They'll, they'll try to bulk him up a little bit as well. But look, these are going to be uh, these are all going to be big parts of future Cork teams if they can get them involved. Yeah, without doubt. I mean, Cork have kind of experienced a similar problem that the Dublin hurling team has, where great players tend to be pretty good at other sports as well. And if the other sport is more successful, those players will go. I mean, Kieran Kenny, Cormac Coslo, Eric Lowndes, Tomas Brady. The list goes on. The amount of brilliant hurlers that chose football, and um, so. Yeah, that is kind of the roundup. Just before we do wrap up, obviously we have to talk about and give a shout out to Joe Canning, still doing the business. 1-8 for Portumna in the club quarterfinal over there in Galway. This guy is just ridiculous. I mean, surely he'd still start for the Galway senior hurlers. Not that he'd come back. Obviously, Henry Shefflin admitted that he did ask Joe to you know, kind of stick around for another year while he was named manager, but he's still good enough, surely. Yeah, and look, I think I think it was interesting was that there was a kind of bit of a debate online afterwards was that if Joe was around for that game against Limerick last year when look in the we all know that going into added time last year in that semi final that that game was level and that it was just that look I suppose David Reedy hit a score I suppose with Limerick and then they t- they clipped on another score and they went it by two and but you're just wondering if Joe Cannon's around coming on for the last five minutes in that game as well could there have been a different outcome maybe. And look, I, I do think that, look, I think Joe's body probably has given up on him a little bit for inter-county and that I don't think he'd have the ability to last a full season. But you'd wonder if, like, if he was, if he could have maybe done something like what Kilkenny did with Richie Hogan last year, I suppose, in the final was that Richie Hogan hadn't played a minute in league or championship all the way. And then in the all-air final, comes on the last 10 minutes and hits a huge score. And yeah, it doesn't work out for him in the end, but he, it could have been an absolute masterstroke that as well. And you'd wonder... Maybe if if Joe had been around, like it's purely hypothetical sort of stuff as well. But like he could have maybe uh provided a bit of a spark with the bench if he was around and could have hit maybe one or two huge scores as well. Because look, the the hurling's still absolutely there. But I do think that the probably for himself is that I think Inter County was just taking a huge amount out of him. And uh, yeah, I don't think well look, we're purely speculating on them, but I don't think he had probably enough in the tank for another full year of Inter County. It's just that maybe if he'd kind of been brought in a little bit before that he could have made an impact on the day for for uh, for Galway. But look, I think it's pretty certain now that like he won't be making the comeback anyway as well. He's done anyway in Galway. Look, they're gonna have to just keep keep looking onwards. But the other thing out of that game as well, Jack Canning was man the match at wing back as well and looked very, very good by all accounts was absolutely uh, colossal in that game as well. So you'd wonder if uh, another fella that we're kind of continuing our team here are fellas that play other sports as well. So we wonder if Henry will kind of give him a call and might try and get him in as well. So that could be one to watch out for as well. Yeah. I mean, if you're talking clutch players, though, like Joe Canning is probably the biggest clutch player I've seen over the last 10 years in Hurling. I mean, that free he took against Kilkenny to level up the All-Ireland Final in 2012, that penalty in 2018 where Limerick had how many men on the goal line and Joe Canning put a post stamp in the top corner and he absolutely nailed it. I think it would be well worth Shefflin saying, look, come back, you can do it on your terms. If you want to play 10 minutes at the end of every game, you can play 10 minutes at the end of every game. He's one of those that I get about maybe not making exceptions for a player, but when a player has the ability that Joe Canning has, surely try and find a way to incorporate him into your plans. 
But yeah, that is the Hurling Roundup here on Play on GAA. There will be a Gaelic football roundup as well, so make sure you check that out. And until the next one, take care.